a really interesting idea of Janusz Korczak um, in his book, How to Love a Child, is uh, the importance he puts on um, playtime for children. And he even talks a little bit that like a child is like a scientist um, with his toys, that you know he'll look at a toy and he'll touch it and he'll hit it a few times and he's almost experimenting with it. Whether or not this is a toddler, you know, a five-year-old, six-year-old, 10-year-old, the children are actually very independent when they're playing. That's what Korczak um, is trying to, uh, you know, emphasize. And I kind of want to ask you, Meyer, about, uh, you know, for Korczak, playtime is not time off. It's time on for children. And maybe you could share a little bit about, like, why do you think Korczak thinks playtime is such a serious act for children um, and how parents should actually respect playtime more for children and give it, you know, greater value? Children, really from right when they're born until quite a later age, most of their mind develops as they're playing. Most of their mind starts to understand different types. From when they're very young, when there's textures, if I'm wearing a glove, if I'm not wearing a glove, if I'm something's happening to my body, to different types of objects, to gravity, to volume, it all is happening during playtime. They're trying to understand all these different types of things that we adults are so smart and already know. We can't teach it to them to the point that they will learn it in playtime. The reason it's so important is that they are understanding who they are in relation to other things. Because that's how we know who we are. I know I'm tall because when I look at other things, I look tall. I know I'm short because when I look at other things, I look short. This is how they're learning to communicate to the world. And when we cut down on playtime and we're making them sit, and whatever, they're actually not absorbing as much as they could by playing on a playground and falling. Oh my God, how did I just fall? That's gravity. They don't need to use that word. They figure it out. They throw their toys on the floor and they figure out something is pushing it to the ground and they're, something is making everything fall. Oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? It's, it's discovery. And in the end, like we hear about all these different discoveries that are made by adults and they're like, oh, when I was a child, I was so fascinated by this one thing. Now that I'm an adult, I go back and I research and I'm like, oh, wait, this is called whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's all starting from this really, really important time in childhood of playing and getting to know yourself and who you are and how you're relating to other people. So it's really problematic when we tell children, oh, stop playing, come sit, or stop doing this, whatever. Because in the end, this is how they're learning. We have to give so much strength to it. When we put a little kid who's six years old in a chair at school for most of the day, we're actually taking away time from them learning, from them experiencing what it is to learn. Okay, cool. Studying from books is important. Listening to your teacher is important. Great traits. But it's nothing in comparison to experiencing what these lessons are about. So we have to give a lot of time and patience because sometimes for parents or for babysitters or for caretakers and teachers, it's like, oh, I don't want to play Monopoly for the fourth time today. Mm -hmm. But that's actually teaching them money management skills, colors, Um, how to differentiate between different types of properties. It's so developing your mind. So you have to just give it that time and that space. So let me add, let me add something uh, that Korczak says to what Maya is saying. Um, you know, Korczak says that a lot of the time that children are around adults, and this, I guess goes back to his belief that adults, you know, maybe not on purpose, but there is a lot of oppression towards children. He says, you know, most of the adult world um, is out of reach. Um, for a child, you know, t- small examples he gives in his books, for example, like, you know, doors are too high for them to um, open up, um, you know, the, the sink is too high up. So, you know, w- like, what can a kid do most of the time when he's around an adult? He's very passive. And when a child gets to play, Korczak says, um, he gets to be in his own element. And he really gets to be active and proactive and involved. And I think the word creative, creative is very important for Korczak, um, because children are radically creative and in that way he likes the word scientist because he thinks of scientists as very creative people even though we don't really think of them like that today but um you know experimentation and i always think about this with my own kids um that i think uh you know when 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 the light is so high up 
and my daughters have to you know get on a stool to turn the light off i mean that is an oppressive adult world that hasn't even thought about who's going to be living in this house not just adults but also children but so most of the adult world is out of reach for the child, but when you put children in a playground, they finally have been put in an area where the adults have thought about children. <laughs> so yeah, things are the right size, ladders fit for children. So it's an amazing thing how children can be independent um, when they're playing. And I think Korchak maybe would want us um, to, to put children more and more in their element growing up because that way they can develop more independently and not just be passive towards adults.